listeners and kinky friends. Welcome to the Sophia Gray Show, where we discuss all things sex, kinks, and fetishes. From the sex stories to the latest trends in the erotic world, we talk taboo transparently. I'm your host, Lacey Bloom, and today we're discussing four of my favorite letters in the alphabet, BDSM, and more specifically, how the popular Fifty Shades of Grey franchise got BDSM wrong in so many ways. So grab a drink, kick back, Mr. Grey will see you now. BDSM is defined as expressing your fantasies and desires of bondage, discipline, dominance, submission, masochism, and or sadism. Ultimately, BDSM is about completely and totally placing your trust in another person to help you fulfill some of your deepest sexual desires. When done safely, it's about fulfilling what some would consider unconventional or dangerous desires in a safe and controlled environment. Unfortunately, one of the biggest issues plaguing the BDSM community are the misconceptions that people, specifically people outside of the community, have about BDSM play. Misconceptions amplified by the popular book and film series, Fifty Shades of Grey, which definitely pushed the idea of BDSM even further from the truth of what safe and healthy BDSM really is. Now, I use the term popular loosely when referring to this franchise because, let's face it, the books are far from perfect. Surprisingly, what began as poorly written Twilight fanfiction went on to top bestseller lists around the world, sell over 125 million copies worldwide by 2015, and set a record in the United Kingdom as the fastest selling paperback of all time. And I'm just talking about the first book. Like it or not, the Fifty Shades franchise inspired a movement. What myself and countless others do applaud Fifty Shades of Grey for doing is helping countless women open up about their sexuality. This franchise became a pop culture sensation and has no doubt helped BDSM become a more talked about mainstream topic, which is fantastic. You can even stay in a Fifty Shades of Grey inspired Airbnb in the UK, fully equipped with sex toys and ceiling mirrors. Guess I know where I'll be spending my next vacation. Unfortunately, that's about as far as my love for the series goes, and here's why. Setting aside the poor writing quality, the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise got BDSM wrong in so many blatant and dangerous ways. To start with, the franchise focused heavily on showing violence integrated with sex, but did so in a way where we missed any and all background context for the situation. The most important thing in BDSM culture is to be safe, even while inflicting or enduring pain. I'm talking rule number one, people. And rule number two? Everything must be consensual. In Fifty Shades of Grey, there are quite a few times when protagonist Anna agrees to something simply for the sake of her partner, elusive billionaire Christian Grey. Anna relents because Christian wants to inflict pain, not because she wants to endure it. This promotes a kind of warped sense of what BDSM actually is and leaves an uneducated audience thinking that it's healthy to push your own limits past what you enjoy, all for the sake of giving your partner what they want, when in reality that couldn't be further from the truth. Just because you're a dom doesn't mean you don't care about your partner, and just because you're submissive doesn't mean you have no say in what goes on. These are perhaps my two biggest peeves with the series because they are pivotal facts in the BDSM world. BDSM is a consensual play between two people who completely and totally trust each other. Christian, the dominant, is painted to be cold and devoid of emotion, which is actually statistically incorrect. According to an article in Psychology Today, people drawn to the dominant role are often particularly psychologically well-adjusted. It's this kind of inaccuracy that wrongly depicts an entire subsection of the BDSM world that can be detrimental. Whether you chalk it up to bad writing or the actor's choice on how to play the character, there are very few times in Fifty Shades where Christian seems to show genuine emotion towards Anna. But let's examine our, um, hero a little more closely. If you were new to the BDSM lifestyle and knew nothing about it, you may have left the theater or put down your book with the assumption that being abused or having some form of PTSD will lead you into trying and or enjoying BDSM. No wonder Christian wanted to inflict pain. What with that awful childhood he had? This idea that if pain was inflicted on you, you would get a sexual release from inflicting pain on others is wildly untrue. In fact, I can't even begin to describe how dangerous that train of thought is. 
It's heavily implied in the Fifty Shades books that Christian turned to BDSM as an adult due to the abuse he suffered as a child. Drawing a link between abuse and BDSM is totally off the mark. Moreover, it's a huge factor for what causes the most judgment or backlash for those in the BDSM community. Presenting this kind of warped fascination with pain stemming from unhealthy abuse is problematic, to say the least. But enough about Christian Grey. I'm going to let you in on a secret, and it's a big one. So listen closely. Seriously, like you won't believe this. Are you ready? Couples who enjoy BDSM also enjoy other things, like holding hands in the park, or going to the movies. I mean, believe it or not, they also go to work. They pay taxes. Oh, hell, they might even have a few kids. What? What? I know. I know, right? I mean, who knew that people who enjoyed BDSM could also just be like, oh, I don't know, normal people who do normal things the other 98% of their normal lives when they aren't having sex? Okay, so if you couldn't sense my intense sarcasm there, this is your disclaimer. To be fair, for some couples, BDSM may be the only way they get off. But for many couples, BDSM is just one of the things they enjoy in their sex lives. Above all, please remember this. Couples who practice BDSM are just that. Regular couples. Their whole lives don't revolve around kinks, sex clubs, and fetishes 24-7. They can be tender and intimate. They might fight. They hold hands. They complain about having a headache to get out of sex when they just aren't in the mood like the rest of us. They're just normal people. You couldn't pick them out of a lineup. What's disappointing is portraying a BDSM couple on screen isn't done very often. And it's a shame that when it is done, it's done in a way that falsely presents them as mocking anything they consider vanilla in a relationship. Sorry, Christian, BDSM and vanilla can coexist. And then there's the Red Room, Christian's Red Room, where he and Anastasia go to play. Well, if that doesn't portray BDSM couples as high maintenance people who have entire rooms in their house dedicated to sex, I don't know what does. Okay, now granted, Christian is extremely wealthy. I will give him that. I mean, maybe if all couples were this wealthy, they might want a room as elaborate as this, dedicated to whatever sexual desires they have. But in reality, this is once again just an over-the-top and rather cheesy depiction that enforces a stereotype of high-maintenance lovers with literally walls of toys and equipment. When did using a bed go out of style? While some BDSM couples do enjoy having a designated space, it's also totally normal to stash toys, bondage equipment, and other fun accessories in the same drawer as their panties, just as other non-BDSM couples do. Now, I'll be the first to admit that when the Fifty Shades of Grey series came out, I binged those books, mainly because it was something unlike I'd never read before. However, and this is a big however, as both my literary and sexual interests broadened over time, I came to see Fifty Shades for what it truly is, a caricature of a culture, and not a positive one at that. But then again, that's just this girl's opinion. Now, whether you binge read the Fifty Shades of Grey books like me or were part of the massive community online dedicated to mocking the series, also like me, my point stands firm. Fifty Shades of Grey did bring attention to a subject that needs to be more openly talked about and accepted. As a devout romance and erotic fiction reader, I can honestly say that the series opened both men and women up to discussing sexual preferences and activities more openly. Unfortunately, the series also glossed over or ignored entirely some of the most important things about BDSM life. And if that isn't a shame, I don't know what is. Mr. Gray, I'd like you to see the door on your way out. But what are your thoughts on the franchise? Do you hate to love it or love to hate it? Drop us a line and let us know. And remember, whether you're looking to buy or sell used panties, Sophia Gray has got you covered. If you want to earn some extra cash, you can set up your own shop in minutes and start selling your own used underwear. And they take no commission. You'll keep 100% of every single sale that you make. If you've got a kink for used panties and you're looking to buy your next pair, look no further. Oh, and the whole process is completely anonymous. 
Sophia Gray will never share, store, or archive your personal information. The name Sophia Gray won't even appear on your bank receipt. So head on over to sophiagray.com, that's S-O-F-I-A-G-R-A-Y.com, to start selling or buying used panties now. Until next time, I'm your host, Lacey Bloom, and I'm here to say, let them be kinky. There's no kink shaming here.